Hello and welcome to Witness, where we bring you personal films from around the globe. I'm Rida Fakhri. The Arabian Gulf is one of the world's busiest waterways. Supertankers crisscross the sea, polluting the water. Cranes mark yet another mega construction project invading the fragile coastal ecosystem, and little is being done to preserve the diversity of its marine life. Fifty years ago, the Gulf was full of sharks, but now no one knows how many are left. Kuwaitis, who once lived off the Gulf's fish and pearls, seem not to know or care. Environmental filmmaker Zena Abul Hossen joined an expedition in search of the sharks of Kuwait. I've always wanted to swim with sharks, and I ended up in the last place anyone would think to look. Kuwait. Fifty years ago, these waters would have been full of sharks. But the Gulf is a small and shallow sea, and has seen many wars and a lot of development since. Are the sharks still here? It was April 2008, and I joined the region's first ever shark research expedition to find out. The sea at last! On a boat, that's what we came for. After the dreary months of a London winter, I was thrilled to be on the boat. I couldn't wait for my first encounter with a shark. The man behind the mission is Richard Pierce head of the Shark Conservation Society from Cornwall in Britain. I've always kind of preferred animals to people, but sharks were something that were with me since I was really tiny. Richard grew up in Kuwait and remembers a sea full of sharks. His aim was to find out exactly how many shark species live in these waters. Current estimates range from 28 to only 12. The Kuwaiti government encouraged him, and the Coast Guard gave us a boat. The mission was clear. Over two weeks, we will scour the sea in search for sharks, visiting spots that would give us maximum coverage of the Kuwaiti coast without straying into Iranian waters. At the same time, another team will visit the local fish market, with the team's scientific advisor, Alec Moore. The whole team was made up of volunteers from Britain. The only local person was Dereen, a young Kuwaiti marine biologist. Hello. And Ali was our Coast Guard skipper. It was day one, and the first step was to set the chum. Those who will see in Jaws will remember a fantastic scene where the guy is sitting in the back of the boat ladling blood over the side of the boat into the water. And that is called chumming, and that blood stuff is chum. Okay, I'll, I'll get this one in. Look at that lovely stuff. It can a bit more strength. The scent trail goes off down the current, and any sharks in that area that, that come across it, it'll trigger a response and they'll come looking for lunch. The secret of this job is keeping a lot of chum going all the time and keeping your eyes open. Those are the only two things to do, really, until something happens. And we were sure something was going to happen any minute. I think it's a daughter, I'm not sure. For me, that's my first experience chumming or searching or researching sharks in Kuwait. We urgently and highly lack studies and surveys to be done in the Gulf region and particularly in Kuwait. I mean, it's not their first um, interest. And I don't think it's their interest at all. I've never seen the point in doing anything easy or obvious. And with all due respect to lots of my colleagues, any idiot can go to South Africa and find a white shark. This is the first time anything like this has ever been done here, in Kuwait. Sea play a very important role in all Kuwaitis. It's an important part of our culture. Most of our traditional food is based on fish and very delicious food as well. But caring about the sea, I would say they would, but maybe they don't know. And that's, that's the problem. They really love the sea. They're so passionate about it, but they think that it will sustain itself um, no matter what you do to it. 
Darin knew what she was talking about. Ali, our Coast Guard skipper, didn't really get our expedition. Even though we were expecting sharks, I grabbed my underwater camera and went for a swim. I was wishing a shark would appear. I've been wanting to see one of these magnificent creatures wild in the water for years. Most of the people they think that sharks are really savage and and they are they will eat you as soon as they see your legs swimming in there and and they are not important and when they see when we see them we just have to kill them and and that's the way they think about it but it's much more um, more than that they are really important in their ecosystem they are keystone species we have to protect them if we want to protect the environment I joined Alex team visiting Kuwait's main fish market part of a shopping mall and built on the site of the old outdoor fish market and harbor. Sadly, the sea is considered a huge supermarket. And it was here that I had my first close encounter with a shark. Alec and the team measure each shark and note its species and gender. We found white cheeks and Arabian carpet sharks, guitar fish and great hammerheads, bull sharks. This one we can tell is a juvenile male, so he hasn't had a chance to, um, to reproduce yet, and he won't be able to, obviously, now. There were also milk sharks and black tips. The day's fresh fish is being brought in and carefully laid out in preparation for the daily fish auction. It's attended by everyone, from merchants to housewives preparing for dinner. Fish is big on the Kuwaiti menu, but fishing practices are only mildly regulated. Fishermen today go out further to find fish, and many species are endangered or threatened. The government's strategy focuses on farming endangered edible fish. Sharks get little attention. Sharks aren't even sold in the auction. They're not really in demand. A small number are sold to locals who still believe an urban myth that eating shark fetuses increases male fertility. Baby, baby. For, for what? For eating? It was inside. They don't really target the sharks specifically. They're fishing for more valuable fin fish like uh, um, Spanish mackerel and I'll catch the sharks and the rays as a bycatch. Keep moving. It was hard for us shark lovers to see so many dead sharks. Over a hundred in one day. But their abundance in the market meant they were out there. I left Alec and the team to carry on the death count and went outside for a breath of fresh air. The coast is now lined with construction and development projects, yet the seaside remains the city's only breathing space. Kuwaitis used to be a seafaring people. Fishing, pearl diving and dow building were their trades. Today, the old-time fishermen sit in air-conditioned offices, remembering. Before the 
السمك السمك كان في كثرة ودخلوا كثيرين على البحر عيشتهم يعني من أيام حلوة ما في شك كان في تعاون بين الكويت كلهم نفسهم المهم اللي يشتغلوا يعني Kuwait was the first Gulf nation to discover oil, and everything changed. The sea now lives in the stories of a generation that has almost disappeared. I couldn't believe my luck when I found Abu Omar, an 85-year-old pearl diver, one of the last remaining. Join me again after the break here on Witness. Welcome back to Witness. I'm Rida Fakhri. Half a century ago, the pearl fishers of Kuwait were used to swimming among sharks in the Arabian Gulf. Now, years of development and environmental degradation have put this precious population at risk. Day five, still nothing. So far, our attempts to find live sharks have been unsuccessful. Morale was dropping. I was beginning to wonder if there were any sharks out there at all. Had the decades of industrial growth and wars taken their toll on this small sea? The day turned into night. And one day turned into another. There was nothing to do but set the chum and wait. Ali tried to cheer us up by introducing us to the local national pastime, fishing. The more I got to know Ali, the more I realized how affected he was by his ancestors. Wait for me, please. I'm not Yes, it was a shark. After days of empty sea, we'd finally hooked ourselves a shark. It was a white cheek, a species common to the Gulf. It doesn't grow to more than 100 centimeters and is known to be near threatened. Tip length is 73 centimeters. Bye bye, little chap. It felt wonderful to see that shark swim away. The daily toll of death at the fish market was constant. And it was starting to become clear why the fishermen were catching so many sharks while we were finding none. 40 to 60 trawlers go out to sea every day, using huge gill nets which trap every sort of fish. Each boat catches only one or two sharks, 
Still, that's an average of 100 to 120 sharks a day. But among the dead, Alec found a shark that was still breathing. We've got a carpet shark that's slightly alive. I'm not sure whether it's really viable. He's definitely um, got strength. You can see his gills are pumping. Um, but I mean, he has been knocked about a bit, but they are really hardy animals. Do you want to... They soon found another one. You uh, dare take both of them in one hand? Yeah, take a look at his tail. We're going to release them. Can you just let them go? Yeah, he's all right. He'll be all right. We're saving sharks one fish at a time. <laughs> Over a week into the expedition and still no exciting encounters. All I saw was tankers crisscrossing the sea carrying half the world's oil exports. I was starting to get worried and miserable, not just because I wanted to swim with sharks. The absence of these incredible creatures is bad news for the whole ecosystem. This is the old style chumming. Very scientific, a dribble at a time. I'm kind of worried and I'm kind of baffled. We're doing exactly the same chumming that I personally have done all over the world, and there's nothing else you can do, really. I do not understand the lack of sharks unless they've lost their sense of smell or there are no sharks here. The ability of someone like the Gulf to repair itself is very like the Med, isn't it? Yeah. A tiny little neck of water leading out into a main ocean system. It's terribly shallow. The whole thing is terribly shallow. When we finished next Saturday, if it's still proved like this everywhere, then I think I personally would conclude it's a fairly sick piece of water. Sadly, Alec was having more success at the fish market. He had found the biggest shark so far, a 2.14 meter bull shark. He also made a fascinating discovery, a shark species never recorded before in the Gulf. It looks like this uh, species smooth toothed black tip that's only ever been recorded, one specimen known to science, and that's recorded off the coast of Yemen in the 1980s. The specimens were preserved and shipped to the Natural History Museum in London, where they will be formally registered and examined. It can then be determined if they are smooth toothed black tips or perhaps an entirely new species. It's really exciting to find something that is only found in Gulf of Aden, finding it in Kuwait, so, so that would really push more research in the region. In two weeks, we had discovered a potentially new species. How much marine life is the sea losing before it has even been discovered? All we were catching was catfish. Are you worried about your sharks? Yeah, a lot, actually, a lot. I was expecting at least to, to see some stuff around, but... Nothing so far, so that wa that's very worrying. I know that it wasn't going to be very good, but I, I, didn't, I didn't think that it was, it's, it's going to be that bad. You have a really beautiful sea. We have beautiful sea, but no one is appreciating it. The trouble is, Kuwait alone cannot protect the marine life in the Gulf. It would take a concerted effort from many countries, including Iraq, Iran, the UAE and others. Unless they all work together, nothing will change. There was nowhere else to go but to Kuwait's most prized aquarium. They allowed me to dive in the tank. This tiger shark is one of the many species we should have encountered at sea, where it belongs. I had finally got close to Kuwait's marine life alive. My camera even survived a minor shark attack. But I must admit, I wasn't satisfied with this sedated artificial encounter. It seemed though that it would have to do. It was our last day on the boat. Once again, we put the chum bags in. But this time, we saw something moving beneath the surface. There's one, two, three, four, five. 
It's literally riddled with sharks. <laughs> you are actually swimming in shark infested waters, Zaina. <laughs> It was magical. I was surrounded by black tips. Worth the two weeks of waiting. We stayed on till the sun set and the shark stayed with us. When I was out there and underwater, um, I could see it circling me. It was amazing. Alex, can get some I was just like going like ladder. this and I could and see it. It was like going you. around me in a circle. It was beautiful. Darin had been diving in Kuwait for nearly 10 years, <laughs> yet this is the first time she's seen sharks. I've learned more about my country. I've learned more about stuff in the Kuwaiti waters. I've realized how big the problem is. I think increasing the awareness in, in Kuwait would be a first step. Maybe it's going to be hard at the beginning, but it's not impossible. It's hard to come into close contact with these incredible creatures and not be moved. It even worked on Ali. Well, I don't know the shark's eyes, the shark, but the shark, I don't know the shark's eyes. It was great to see attitudes starting to change. But if sharks are going to survive in the Gulf, a lot more work needs to be done. Thank you for watching, and I hope you can join me next time here on Witness.